Welcome back, you guys. So this is another video in my Dancing Flower series. So I'm doing this series on YouTube and it's in my journal to go along with a course that I have out and it is the Watercolor Journaling for Beginners. So if you love to do things in your journal, definitely go and check out my class. I think you will love it. There are so many amazing um, floral tutorials in there like these and just so many others, you know, like literally this journal is filled with really beautiful florals that um, you can learn very similar to the one that I'm going to teach you today. So I've already bordered out with some tape and that's just because I kind of like what I'm doing here. This was the last video that we did on the channel. So you can go back and watch this one if you want to learn to do these dancing poppies. Uh, today I'm going to do a really, really fun take on a abstract watercolor flower that you can do with a uh, manganese violet. And I'm going to use by A. Gallo this beautiful color that I can never pronounce. It's Notorno. I think it is Notorno, like night, right? It's this one. It is so, so pretty. So I just want to say thank you to A. Gala for sending me this beautiful watercolor set. If you want to buy their watercolors, you will love them. This is the granulating set of colors. It's got this beautiful azo yellow. It's just like a kind of a yellow gold in it. It's so pretty. They have gorgeous blues like lapis and their ultramarine is stunning. Carmine Potter's Pink. It's one of the best Potter's Pink that I have ever played with. So definitely go and check out their colors. I couldn't say enough good things. And most of their sets come with these brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Tintorito brush. I also have this linked below. So if you guys want to um, get any of these, you can actually go and use my Jackson affiliate link. What I do with that purchase is we earn a little bit of credit and we buy people uh, gifts in my my uh, Facebook group page because it's fun. <laughs> this is fun to do. So I'm taking some of my manganese violet. This is manganese violet from Schminka. Um, I also have a tutorial on my channel of the Schminka wood box set and I really like that set. It's a great one. So if you ever want to uh, take a look at Schminka watercolors, I think you'll like it. So that's my manganese violet right there. And then I'm going to take my Noturno and just kind of add it to the side. I like to put it into the pan first uh, just to kind of really get it into my brush, you know. Ooh, look at that. So we can just start. Since there's some on my finger, I'm just putting it on my thing here. Don't mind my dog. That is uh, Skylar. She is a Siberian Husky. I have two of them and she will chime up from time to time. So a really easy way to make these abstract flowers where you just don't get lost is just to start with a couple of random little dots. I think that is the best way and easiest way to just get things going and to make it really, really loose. So give that a try and let's see what we can do with it shall we with this really neat quill brush by Tintorito. I like this brush. This is a fun brush to use. So I'm going to put a few little dots of this beautiful Noturno there and I'm going to put a few probably right here and maybe a couple up here. Let's start there for now. Unfortunately, I have to rinse this out of my brush, but look at this. I have a second brush. So rather than rinse this out of my brush, because I might want to use it in a second, let's just use the second one. So I got some, a lot of nice water, clean water on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come from where that watercolor is. And I'm going to smear just clean water by laying the belly of the brush down and look at how it pulls that color. Now, depending on your watercolor that you're using and the paper, that's going to determine these runs and how beautiful the color is, if it bleeds, if it granulates, you know, and what it does. 
and how it flows together. And that all has to do with the, the paint, the brush, because the brush has to hold enough water, and the color. So now I'm just kind of dragging. Isn't this great? This is the most fun I have with, I love watercolor. Oh my gosh, it's just great. Now look at how beautiful and organic these lovely flowers are. They're so, so pretty. So wetting our, our brush and just dragging it out, just kind of, you know, giving us some petals from that center core and just letting it evolve. That's just like that. I mean, hello, could it be any easier? No, no, I still have some color on my brush. So I'm going to go over here and maybe just, you know, give us some smudges because uh, usually, I mean, I think you don't really just have three, you know, like usually when you're looking at watercolor or you're looking at flowers in nature, there's more than just one just sitting there, right? Unless you're holding three. But I just, for balance, I kind of like, I don't like to leave all of the paper white. So I'm using that. Now I'm going to grab my manganese violet and I'm going to just tap in some and let it explode through these uh, gorgeous petals just to add those shots of color because I really love uh, the texture and the mix of having this bright, beautiful purple shade in into my flowers, you know? And then maybe I'll like kind of just do some dotting on the base or something like that. But see how gorgeous that is? It just kind of, it created itself. I mean, that's it. We just, we don't, we don't go past that. We just leave it. And I'm just going to roll some of the color based on what I feel this painting needs um, in some different areas to travel the eye around, you know, like I might want some smudges here and there of these gorgeous colors on the paper. I don't even know that I want them all the way down here, but I tend to really like a little bit of a suggestion that maybe petals have fallen down below. So I'm just kind of going to dry brush in a few little things like this. And then I can take this brush again and I can literally kind of go backwards and dot in some of the darker Noturno from A Gala. I just love this color. I mean, oh my God, you guys, if A Gala is watching this, thank you for sending me these because I would have never known about this color. It's just beautiful. It really is. So I'm just kind of dotting a few just to establish some ground. And then I'm going to create a little bit of a, uh, kind of like it, like there's a, a surface here and just dry brush it through and I just I just do that because I like a lot of movement and I like my things to look a little more finished okay so we can rinse these brushes out now we're done with them because we've established our flowers look how easy that is the rest of the work will be up to the paper if you have a really good watercolor paper then it will keep working for you after you lay the color down to kind of smooth things out and blend them. And then you can always go back and, and make it, you know, more detailed or more dark or define it, even take a pen to it, colored pencil, pastels, whatever it is. You can take these water uh, soluble, not water soluble, uh, water resistant black liners in there to enhance it if you want. You can even draw your stems with those, but I'm going to show you how to make really quick and easy stems with a brush. And guess what brush we're going to use? Of course, I'm going to use this one. So I usually I typically use this one or this one, depending on the size. So um, I know this looks very, very thick, but believe it or not, I can get very thin lines with the tip of this brush. Or you can just go with the smaller size. <laughs> I would really like, I just would certainly use this one because the tip is so nice and, and I'm used to handling it. You might want to practice on a sheet first, but this is the size four Escoda Versatile. I'm a size 10 Escoda Versatile. They're considered round brushes, but they're long hair round. So when you go to look for them, I have an affiliate link below because they are very difficult to find. And, um, I just love them. You can get them in every size. I mean, I highly recommend this is my most used brush. If you have, um, 
other options that you might have is this one, which is the Escoda Prado size two, similar brush, but it's a Prado. So what's going to happen? And the reason why I like this better is because this isn't going to hold as much water or paint. So you are going to run out of your line very quickly where this will keep going and this will kind of keep going because the belly of the brush is bigger and the way the brush is shaped, you can see it's tapered out a little bit and then tapered in like to the point that belly holds a lot. You can do a lot of lines really quickly with this brush. So I'm going to do lines with all three of these brushes just to show you guys how easy it is. I'm just going to take the Nocturno, mix it in here, get a nice deep dark line. And let's see, we'll put this here. So I'm just going to do it just like that. Then this one is the size for Escoda Versatile. On this channel, I always point out, um, do brush comparisons and stuff because all of my students, that's pretty much what you guys are really looking for on my channel is how I'm using different things and, and different brushes and watercolor. So I'm always talking about those things on here. Um, and of course, in great depth <laughs> in the watercolor classes, a lot more than you get here. But still, you're going to be able to learn a lot from this YouTube channel. Okay, so here I'm starting at the bottom and I'm just bringing it up and staying pretty organic. I hit an area right there that was uh, wet, so I just kind of backed it out with my, my finger. But as you can see, these are still really, really light lines. You know what I mean? And don't worry if it's not entirely good. Actually, I just kind of feel like I want to get some, I don't know. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like there should be wood, like wood stalks, you know, like rosemary stalks on here. So now I'm just adding a little more color to the base and letting that um, explode out. Yeah, I like that. All right, now let's get the big guy. And I'll show you, get a lot of stuff in the brush. Look at that, just as thin, just as easy. In fact, it's darker. If you look closely, this one is darker and really well-defined. These, not as much because they don't hold as much water, so therefore they don't hold as much color either, and they run out. So the consistency of this color is here. So it's like if I even wanted to uh, establish really neat, interesting uh, leaves, all I do is just lay it down and rub it, and and then come off of come off of that, and it gives me just beautiful looking shapes, you know, very, very organic, gorgeous looking shapes, adding more water. Um, if I wanted to try and get it with the other ones, it's much more hard. So see, like you can't really get the shape without doing a second side, you know, let me clean up some of this water just carefully with my rag. And then when that dries, I can go back in and I can define it more, but it absolutely won't do it. This is a much smaller, smaller leaf because it's a thinner brush. You need the big belly in order to get those big, beautiful, um, you know, it's just a different leaf, but I can still make it work no matter what. I wouldn't even try to do these leaves with this because it just, it wouldn't be the same. And they, uh, ultimately I think they would disappoint. So let's give one more with this belly. Let's get enough water in here. Lovely. So, so pretty. So I kept adding water to get them lighter. And then I just kind of play with it a little bit. And I don't, I don't want these shapes to be perfect. I want them to be rough around the edges because it kind of goes with the whole piece. Now look at that. Is that not gorgeous or what? 
so pretty so we can literally sign this and then some of that uh some of that light really really light nocturno in the background rinse these out always rinse your brushes out never ever leave them sitting in water and keep a rag on hand uh, just to dry them and then set them down don't ever leave them sitting in water they will just bend and you won't get that big beautiful point for much longer I always reshape my brushes I even use this um, I love this stuff it cleans brushes out really well so like every few days if I'm doing a lot of painting and I have something uh, that's stuck in the brush like blue I will use this it's a brush cleaner you can get them on Amazon everywhere and you just swirl the brush around and then uh, clean it off in the water really really well and it does a great job, especially of getting stuff that maybe get on into the into the uh, feral. So I really love this, and I was thinking, okay, what happens if you really love that and you want more of that roll? So if I took this brush, right, because it's got a nice big belly, or I took the Tintorito, we could just roll some um, some of the paint very very lightly. But I actually think, I mean, I can do it with this brush, but because this is such a small piece, let's rinse this one out. Shape it, leave it there. Let's go back to our Tintorito brush, grab some color and make sure it's really diluted with the water. Yeah. And I'm just going to kind of roll it around a little bit establishing some more, just loosening up these leaves so that this area is not so stark because I really do love uh, I like the white but I also love just kind of feeling like there's more to this painting than just you know just plain leaves and stems you know what I mean I like the texture that this is making in the background so I tend to do that I do that a lot like if you notice in some of the class uh, things, I just did some like fun washes and I do like to kind of like mess with the backgrounds a bit, you know, just for fun because there's so much of just that can just be played with in watercolor that you don't really need to leave your background white unless you specifically want it to be left white. Like even with this one, you know, I did this nice blue in the background that I actually did after I painted the flower. And I actually think it makes the flower pop out better than if it were just white. And I think it makes more of a piece, you know, like if I want to frame this, that looks a really, really pretty, like abstract piece, you know, it's very modern. So backgrounds, I think, add to the, the painting. What do you think? I think they do. Like there's like, here's one without a background. You see how it's it's just a different look but it doesn't really it looks like just a practice piece it doesn't really give us you know that that thing I don't know that special thing okay so now that we have this let's just add one other little touch and that's a little spatter I love a little spatter I really do now I don't want it to get on my other side here so I'm going to cover this and I'm going to cover the top because I really just want it in a in one location so I'm gonna take this brush and right there perfect and right there okay voila I love that <laughs> it's so pretty it really is now if I want to just break this up a little bit I can actually take my brush and I can create some texture just by breaking this up a little bit, letting it ride, holding the brush at the very end because you don't want to direct it. You want it to be really random, but I'm just breaking up some of the splatter. Here we go. I really like what the splatter does. I don't know. I think it elevates if it's just done tastefully, I think it can really elevate a painting because it adds the texture, the kind of texture that takes it from just a, 
plain beginner painting to something just a little bit more interesting. And I find that when I see the splatter in the end, when it's all dry and said and done, I'm like, oh, I really like that. You know, like I wish I would have done more with it. And I definitely feel that um, some of these florals, if you just leave them alone, they, they kind of look a little bit stark, a bit boring, but that texture just to me, it makes all the difference in the world. What do you think? All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I certainly hope you come over and check out my classes. Don't forget, if you stuck with me this far, you probably like these tutorials. So you're going to love the sketchbook class for the beginners, or I got even a good one for you floral lovers out there. How about a little transparent watercolor flowers? These are really fun. You can learn to paint transparent watercolor flowers and semi-transparent ones with me in this class that I have uh, just added to my watercolor classes. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great day and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to give a gallo a little shout out because they supplied these beautiful watercolors so that I could just paint this gorgeous piece, Nocturno. I love this. Actually, I think I'm gonna photograph this and offer this in, in a print on my JacquelineJacks.com because I really love the way this turned out. What do you think? All right. Happy painting. Bye.